Go, 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 go. Folks, welcome back to another episode of The Fallen Badge. Today, the murder of Patrolman Justin Hare, New Mexico State Police. Now, I did a members-only video, Officer Down update on Patrolman Hare back right after he was murdered. Patrolman Hare was 35 years old. He had six years with the New Mexico State Police. Now he wasn't married, but now he had a girlfriend and they had two children together and a third on the way. His mom and daddy were still alive and he had a brother. Now the suspect, and this is a broken record when I tell you this, but he should have still been in prison, but as is usually the case, the justice system breaks down and they put dangerous people back on the street so they can harm innocent civilians and police officers. I would go over his record, but it's so long and violent that I don't want to take up the space or the oxygen. Now, most of the information for this case is coming from a affidavit of complaint written by the FBI because they put federal charges on the suspect so this information should be very accurate it's March 15th 2024 it's about 447 in the morning patrolman Hare he gets dispatched out to the area of mile marker 318 now, the actual mile marker, I believe, was 320. You can find it on the maps when you get down there. Just look for that railroad trestle, and that's the spot. Now, that was on Interstate 40. Now, that's in Quay County. Now, the call was pretty simple and routine. It was to assist a disabled motorist. Now, the New Mexico State Police had gotten a a call regarding a male black that was trying to flag down passing motorists. Now, thank God no motorist decided to stop and help this individual because he was going to kill whatever person stopped to help him. And that's going to be Patrolman Hare. Now, Patrolman Hare had a dash cam camera and he also had his body camera on. So now... Patrolman Hare pulls up on the scene, and the male black standing out there by a white BMW parked there on the side of I-40. Now this individual, our suspect, he walks around to the passenger side door of the police vehicle. Now I believe the first thing that Patrolman Hare said after he lowered the window on the pasture side, he said, hey bud, can I help you? Now Patrolman Hare, he didn't exit the patrol vehicle. He was just sitting there in the driver's seat and he was talking to the suspect. Now Patrolman Hare, he offered to give a ride to the suspect to the town just down the interstate there. He told him there wasn't any repair shops open. Now the BMW just had a flat tire and that was the extent of it. Now, Patrolman Hare said, well, I'll give you a ride, but I need you to step to the front of my patrol vehicle. Now, the suspect knew what Patrolman Hare was going to do. He knew Patrolman Hare was going to get out and pat him down. Now, the thing Patrolman Hare didn't do or didn't have a chance to do is, is run the tag on that car. Because if he had, it would have shown that vehicle belonged to a missing person that became a homicide victim in the great state of South Carolina. They would later find her body with a bullet in the back of her head. He never got a chance to run that tag. Now, of course, the suspect, he's not about to walk out to the front of that patrol vehicle. 
and he's sure not going to let Patrolman Hare pat him down because he's got a pistol on him, a stolen pistol. So the suspect, he pulls out his pistol and he shoots Patrolman Hare. In the affidavit of complaint, the agent described the video as there was a flash and a loud noise consistent with gunfire. The agent said it appeared that Patrolman Hare had been shot. He didn't respond or make any kind of an utterance, and he slumped to the right side of the seat. You then see the suspect come around the front of the vehicle, come over to the driver's side. Once he got to the driver's side door, he then shot Patrolman Hare two more times. He then shoved Patrolman Hare over into the passenger seat, and he left the scene. Now, when Patrolman Hare first made the scene, obviously he advised his scene. Well, now, after so many minutes, if the dispatcher doesn't hear from an officer, they're going to call and check on them. Well, it just depends on the department. It could be anywhere from five minutes to ten minutes. Well, anyways, dispatcher hadn't heard back, so she starts calling. Well, Patrolman Hare doesn't answer back. Now, at 5.09 a.m., a duress signal comes from Patrolman Hare's either the in-car radio or the his handy talkie portable radio approximately five minutes after he'd made the scene. So I don't know if Patrolman Hare was able to activate that emergency button on his handy talkie or if the suspect hit the one that's attached to the car mounted radio. Anyways, the dispatcher sends cars out there to see what's going on. Now, officers make the scene, and they find the white BMW with the flat tire, and that's all they find. Now, one of those responding units sees Patrolman Hare's squad unit rolling in a hurry on the I-40 access road there on the, that runs parallel to the interstate. So now they have units that get on that access road and start chasing the suspect. Now they get down a whole mile or two, not sure the exact distance, but they find the patrol vehicle that's off the side of the road. The suspect's then wrecked out. So the suspect's nowhere around. Patrolman Harris not in the patrol vehicle either. So now they got two vehicles and no bodies. So now you've got local police and the state police are trying to find Patrolman Hare, trying to find the suspect that he'd stopped, and it is one big mess. Now, it's just a few minutes later, they find Patrolman Hare. He's been dumped off the side of the road there on that access road. And he's got multiple gunshot wounds to the head and the neck. Now, he's transported to a local hospital, and he's pronounced DOA. Now, they find 9mm casings up on the scene around that white BMW. Not the same kind of rounds that the New Mexico State Police carry. So they know without even looking that Patrolman Hare probably hadn't fired his weapon. Now, they find several bullets lodged in the patrol vehicle. They find one projectile located between the center console and the driver's seat, one in the front passenger door panel, and one lodged in the lockbox in the back of the patrol vehicle. Now, that lockbox is normally used to lock away the AR rifle that state police are issued. They also located one projectile in the light bar. Now they check on that white BMW with that South Carolina license plate. Now it's registered to a female and she's a paramedic. Now this paramedic had been missing for several days. Several days prior to the events that they're looking at now. On March 15th, 2024, they found that paramedic. She was dead. Now, obviously, this makes the suspect who has murdered Patrolman Hare 
primary suspect in the killing of this paramedic. Now, the house where the paramedic lived, it had been burglarized. Several guns were taken. One of them was a Taurus 9mm pistol. Now, they had some really good pictures of the suspect and what he was wearing. Now, his picture and clothing was put out all over the media. So everybody was aware of what was going on. So now it's March 17th, 2024. Our suspect walks into a gas station area of Coors Boulevard Southwest and Blake Road Southwest, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now he bought some cigarettes, which just, just shows you how intelligent he is. When he buys cigarettes, he's going to have to show his ID. So he shows his ID. Well, the clerk looks at that ID and she sees that it's a South Carolina driver's license. She also notices the way that the suspect's first name is spelled. Because that was in the news broadcast too, what his first name was and the fact that he spelled it different than the way most people would spell his first name. So now as soon as our suspect walks out of that store with his cigarettes, the clerk, she calls the police. Now the sheriff's department, they start sending deputies out that way. And of course, now the sheriff's department calls the state police and you know they sent some people. Now probably a mile or so away from the store location, the lieutenant pulls up. You can see it on his body cam. He pulls up there on the east side of a neighborhood. Now he's getting out of his vehicle. Looks like he's getting ready to get his AR out. While he's standing there, he looks up and he sees the suspect. Because the clerk gave a pretty good description of the suspect and what he was wearing. And it was still basically the same clothing he had on when he killed Patrolman Hare. So he hollers at the suspect, stop. Of course, suspect doesn't. He takes off running and he runs back west through the house as he has to climb a fence. So the lieutenant puts it out. Of course, police are all over the place. So the chase is on. Suspect will dart around behind the house and then a second or two later, the police are right on him, so he's running again. Now at one point, the lieutenant gets up on a wall because all these houses are separated by brick wall. Lieutenant gets halfway up a wall and he sees a suspect and the suspect's on a trampoline. He's going to hurl himself over a wall over into the next yard. I guess he got tired. But at some point doing that, the suspect made a furtive gesture towards his waistband, towards his gun. And Lieutenant cranks off rounds at him. Now the suspect runs through that next yard, still running westbound, goes over the next wall and then he lays down by the wall. Now, a deputy and that lieutenant, they get to that next wall. There's a lady at that house hollering at them that dude's laying down by the wall. Now, the suspect got hit by gunfire. Not fatally, of course. Only an innocent civilian would be killed by gunfire or a police officer just trying to do his job. So they take him into custody, recover the pistol. Now they went back and they watched the footage from the store and they were checking out the security cameras in the surrounding area because of course they got to figure out how the suspect got from out there around mile marker 320 on Interstate 40 all the way to Albuquerque. Well they see that the suspect had been around a white flatbed truck that was parked near the store. The suspect seen walking to that flatbed truck close to the gas state. Now they check and sure enough March 16th, 2024 that flatbed truck was stolen from Cuervo, New Mexico. That's around mile marker 291 on I-40. Now that's about 13 miles from where the all the goings on went on. Now the feds, they charged the suspect with carjacking resulting in death and a discharge of a firearm during and in relation to a crime of violence. So I can assure you right now that those federal charges are suspects not going to see the light of day. And that's not counting what the state's going to do to him. 
in New Mexico, and then, oh, by the way, the state of South Carolina wants it too. Patrolman Justin Hare. End of watch. March 15th, 2024.